And now, it's time for the Spirit Campfire, starring Ted Nugent and John Brinkus. It's the show about the physics of spirituality with attitude. Dude. Look at him. <laughs> Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday. As How a about man, that? 49. I remember when I was 49, I wore a live rabid badger for a loincloth swinging from a rope scaring <laughs> white people. You want know, to know what? You want to know what the greatest thing about my birthday? One of the greatest things about my birthday. First of all, my daughter and son made me a present, which was amazing. My wife, we, my wife, our whole family went out to lunch because we had to do this tonight. But I went, I went to uh, the uh, mailbox, and look what I got. Look at what I got, Uncle Ted. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And I also got, look at this, Spirit Camp by Tumblr. Is that now? Now you didn't go off and do that all on my account because it was my birthday, did you, Uncle Ted? No, <laughs> no, no. I did I it mean, for the 244th birthday of America, which is coming up in right. a couple days. But let's, um, you know, happy birthday to you, John. But happy birthday to America. Happy birthday to a real America. Goodwill, decency, positive energy, spirit. This is the spirit campfire, and I'm feeling 
in spite of the world around me, well, actually, the world around me is so cool, it's, it's, it's deceptive, because the world around me, I'm surrounded by such positive people of goodwill and decency and energy and piss and vinegar and dreams and ideas and, and love and caring and empathy and compassion and exhilaration and effervescence. So I celebrate that good. And Independence Day, okay, there's an actual day, the 4th of July, fireworks, okay. I don't set off fireworks because I'm too busy shooting machine guns. My fireworks actually hit something downrange. Um, so the Nugent family celebrates Independence Day with lots of barbecue, a lot of friends, a campfire. We have a real campfire. This is the electronic yeah. campfire. Go ahead and warm your buttocks against my spirit campfire. But John, right. it is your birthday and... America's 244th birthday is coming up. Yep. And this will be my 72nd birthday this year. Don't show but, off like that. Well, it's, it, you know, I didn't invent the middle finger, but I did perfect it once I caught it on fire. And I share that <laughs> with everyone because if you're going to have a middle finger, you might as well ignite that son of a bitch. So here we are celebrating always the positive. John, thank you for you know, getting together with the old Motor City Madman and creating a spirit campfire that is the physics of spirituality yeah. with attitude. And we've done, I don't know, a half dozen. We had the great Billy Gibbons on and Tim Montana. And we had the, the great Mitch Ryder on. We've had some wonderful, we had some wonderful call-ins. People, you can tell there's a an upbeat, positive spirit to everybody that hangs out where Ted Nugent might be prowling. So that positive energy is contagious. It's important. But as we start out tonight, we got we got the greatest rhythm section in the world, the Funk Brothers from Pennsylvania and Detroit. We got Jason Hartless, my incredible drummer, and we have Greg Smith, my amazing bass player. They'll join us here in a minute. But if I could go into a soliloquy, is that the right word? Go into you can't a, be, can Go ahead. You, you want to interject? A soliloquy. I want to give a shout out just really quick, just because we have such a huge audience tonight. Tonight, I think we have our biggest audience yet. Um, everybody who's out there, it's incredibly important that you heart it up. Thumb, give us a thumbs up. Let us know where you are watching from, because I want everybody to understand that this Ted Nugent audience, the Spirit Campfire, is reaching globally. It's a global audience. I have California. I've got Tennessee. We have the UK. We've got Australia. We've got New Zealand. Ted, you've been in New. When was the last time you were in New Zealand? I've never been to Australia or New Zealand, which is why they crave my music because they are they're real shit kickers over there in new zealand australia all around the world but by the way you're mentioning all these places yeah that's really and i don't want to go too sappy here but that really is my family i mean the music right. connects us there is an undeniable almost mother child bond and i know that's really reaching out there which i'm the master of but i'm telling you johnny you've noticed this with people that have called in yeah. The artist, when Billy Gibbons' songs are played, sure, you want to shake your ass, probably have a couple beers and have a good time, but it goes way beyond just the energy and the chord changes and the fire and the passion and the vocals and the drums and the bass. It really is a, a, a soundtrack moment to millions and tens of millions, if not billions of people's lives. So my soliloquy, celebrating Independence Day a couple days early, I've been celebrating it every day all year for the last 70 years. And a half years but i want to just start this spirit campfire out thank you you people you know you'll notice that i'm rather buoyant i'm a rather upbeat alive son of a bitch and i owe it to the tsunami the never-ending tsunami of positive energy and spirit that i get every day on my facebook going up to the feed mill stopping at the gas station at the sushi bar at the gun store um hanging out up and you know shoveling gravel with a buddy of mine down the road here everybody talks about how they love america and how we are shattered as to what's going on so before we bring jason heartless and greg smith on i want to give my overview that is an accumulation of that positive spirit to maximize the good while we fight against the bad and the ugly. 
And I think it can be best summarized with all the people every day on Facebook. Well, Ted, what can I do? The, the rioters are close to my neighborhood. The, the, the vandals and the arson, and they're beating people up. And, and there's deceit in the government and corruption. Here's a simple answer. And it might sound too simple, but I'm telling you, this is it. This is how you fortify the American dream to maximize the positive while we unite to fight against the clear and present danger of criminality, corruption, fake news, and the, and the negativity. So we want to make this positive. Let's identify how to crush the negative. And it's so simple. Everyone listen closely. Be sure you're a member of the National Rifle Association. It's the most important civil rights organization in the world. Because if you haven't got the right to defend yourself, you haven't got any rights. And I'm going to tell you, John, if it wasn't for the NRA, those people that are not being beat and their homes are not being burnt are because the NRA and the Gun Owners of America and the membership have fought so we can continue the most important civil rights right in the world, and that's the right to keep and bear arms so that we can defend our lives and our families and our neighborhoods. So number one, be sure you're a member of the NRA and Gun Owners of America and, and your state organization. Number two, make sure your elected employees know your name. If you're not in touch with your employees enough for them to know your name, you are a worthless boss. And we the people are the boss. And we have to tell the prosecutor in St. Louis, you can't prosecute a husband and wife for defending their lives. You can't prosecute a husband and life, wife for defending their home from a violent mob. So activism, being engaged in the sacred experiment in self-government is job number one for the last best place the United States of America that we're celebrating Independence Day. And everything I just said is about independence. This, the couple in St. Louis, they couldn't call the cops. There were no cops around. The security guards wouldn't come. They were independent upon themselves to protect themselves. So that's my positive spotlight to make sure we don't hide from the bad and the ugly. So uh, I would once again, thank you everybody for the communication you give me on my Facebook and on yeah. the not so mean streets of America. But that's why John, I'm so positive because I get this everywhere I go and I'm humbled beyond words that people would even bother stopping me and go, hey Ted, what about this? Hey Ted, thanks for that. Hey Ted, I'm dealing with this. How do I handle it? That they would even come to the goofy guitar player is an indication that I have always towed the line for truth, logic, common sense, and we the people. And I appreciate the communication beyond words. So thank you, everybody. I want to make it really clear here, too. It's it, What's interesting is, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, Ted Nugent gets super political and Ted Nugent becomes polarizing because he's political. I think uh, here's what I hear. What I hear is Ted Nugent is an American and Ted Nugent stands up for everybody's right to say whatever they want to say, to express their point of view peacefully. Like that's what I hear Ted Nugent say. Not my, I don't and, want to hear any know, most, not mostly peacefully, peacefully, because peacefully. some of these, some of these events that were mostly peaceful, entire cities of burnt to the ground. We don't want, we don't well, want to play mostly rock and roll. We want to play gung ho, gonzo, full time. It's the modify, yeah, it's that modifying roll. word. So, Here we are, listen, Ted. We officially have our biggest audience of the night. We've got Craig Hawkins from South Carolina. Hello, Craig. We've got Frank from Chicago. We have Mark Peacock from California. We've got my, my Adam from Washington State. I mean, we look, we've got Frank from Bend, Indiana. Listen, the reason why we have our biggest audience, the reason why we need to get positive energy out there is the algorithm for social media, especially Facebook, you have to hit the heart button. You got to hit the like button. You got to let people know that a positive energy spirit fire is occurring. The only way to do that is to hit the heart button. Hit it a million times. Hit the thumbs up. Make sure that that Ted has 3.5 million people on Facebook alone. We're streaming to multiple platforms. Hit the heart. Hit the thumb. Let the world hear. Let that algorithm latch on and announce a spirit campfire is going on. 
That's how we accumulate positive energy and perpetuate it. That's my little soliloquy. Around, there you go. Around, around the world. So, yes, we'll take those calls because I know Mark Peacock, it's been a long time since we'd have a nice conversation. He's a great guy out in California. He knows real rock and roll. And I understand he plays bass guitar in a country band, but I'm trying to fix that. Anyhow, let's bring in the greatest rhythm section, if I may, John. We had Billy right, Gibbons Herbert, on. Get we ready. had Tim Montana. We had uh, Mitch Ryder. And now from Detroit. The Motor City Mad Thunder drummer, Mr. Jason Heartless on drums, my drummer. How many years now, Jason? Four years now? Yeah, yeah, four, four or five years, something like that. Are you okay? Well, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, it's just you have a you have a slight limp, but I I think that's part of the job description. Oh, of course. I mean, every year it gets more and more crazy. And the other funk brother, somewhere in the mountains of Pennsylvania with a 30 out six, is the other funk brother, bass dog commando, Greg Smith. Greg, welcome to the Spirit Campfire. Thanks, Ted. Good to be here. And how you've been with me now for what, 15 years or some damn thing? Yeah, th uh, this is my 15th year, which uh, actually I believe now, I think I surpassed Derek if you add up all the years together. Well, if uh, with that mentioned, if everybody, you know, there's a lot of positive spirit at the Nugent Campfire here, Nugent Brinkus Campfire, but if everybody, yeah. please, just a moment of silence for Greg and Jason because they have to deal with me every summer. Moment uh, of silence. Listen, I, I need to jump in here, and I got I to gotta ask a question. I got the first question here because I want from Jason. Jason, first of all, Jason and Greg, I want everybody who's always talking about how crazy Ted Nugent is. Now, Ted Nugent... Wild crazy, and I think he'll be self-proclaimed crazy. Wild crazy, he's crazy like a fox. What what have you seen that just has blown you away? Because you guys have now been all over the world with him. You've played with him forever, and you've been in front of millions and millions and millions of fans. What's the craziest thing that you've seen from Ted Nugent that blew you away? Well, you know what? For me, I, I've been there for a long, long time. I don't know if this is crazy, but it's crazy cool. For me, standing next to him, while he's playing Stranglehold, when he starts that and the PA is cranking, Frank's got that that thing going and uh, the guitar tone is right and everybody's spot on and it's 40 something years since he wrote that song. I'm looking at him and I'm looking the the goose, goose pimples right up his arm. So that many years later, after writing that song and performing that song for so many years, he's still that inspired by it to get goose flesh. It's just, it's amazing. That, it just and I think, I think that happens better. I think that happens every damn song, doesn't it? How about, I was talking earlier. So, Jason, when you first started, and we're getting ready to go, and we play, uh, uh, um, we're an American band by Grand Funk Railroad, and sometimes we'll play, uh, 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 what's the song by Blackfoot that we play? Train, Train. Train, Train. And then we play Street Fighting Man before I hit the stage. And, Jason, you're 25, have you ever met a more enthusiastic or young guitar player as me? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, and it's, it's hilarious that, that Greg brought up the goose, goosebumps because I talk to people about that constantly. I've never seen someone get goosebumps just talking about music. It's crazy. <laughs> That's, That's good amazing. crazy. I guess, you know, and that goes back to the bottom line. I know Jason never ever in his life said, I want to be a rock star. I know Greg Smith never in his life said, I want to be a rock star. They wanted to be musicians. Greg, tell right. us yep. the difference between the guys that want to be a rock star versus the guy that just wants to play soulful, adventurous, creative music. Because, Greg, I'm telling you, John, there's nothing these guys can't do. I don't care if I whipped into a John wow. Coltrane lick or a Motown song or a James Brown. Uh, I probably they probably couldn't play Peter Paul and Marion. I'd have to shoot myself. But <laughs> they, they can play they can play anything. And and so, Greg, what is the difference between the musical life that we've led all our lives and the guys who want to be a rock star and the guys that just wanted to make killer music? There's a huge difference, isn't there? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, at, at least I know in my case, you know, I spent my teenage years from from about 13 to 17 or 18 in the basement, just becoming a better player. I didn't care about chicks or clothes or anything like that. You know what I mean? It was just about being the best player I could be, like that constant repetitive motion and, you know, being frustrated about not getting it right and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, not thinking about anything else. Of course, later on, the chicks was a nice fringe benefit. But, yes. you know, <laughs> there's nothing cringe about that. 
<laughs> well, and that, and Jason, you know, I don't think you know this, John, but Jason started playing and being mentored by guys like Corky Lang from Mountain when he was like five and six years old. Jeez. Jason, being born in Detroit, what is the Motor City reference to your unbridled attack to make thunder drumming music? Well, you know, it's just, and you and I have had many conversations about this over the years, you know, and it's it's just like there's something about Detroit musicians that honestly can never be matched. There's something in the water here that, you know, we just, we were bred into this crazy insanity of music. You know, you had Mitch Ryder, uh, you know, uh, a couple of days ago, and like I've played with Mitch, you know, a few times, actually Greg has as well. And it's like, you know, he's he's up there given 110%. It doesn't matter if he's sick or whatnot, you know. Every single gig, you're going to go up there and, and, you know, blow these people's uh, minds away. Right. Hey, I, 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 I'm looking at the comment box here, and there are so many people who are like, I saw these, so I saw these guys play, and I'm listing pretty much every state. Um, I want the, there's a question that came in here. I, what is the first gig that both of you played with Ted? What's the very first time? Mine was um, the Lacona uh, Bike Fest. That was it, it. It turned into a nightmare in terms of the promoter because they the promoter ran off with you know like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, and it was crazy. But uh, yeah, that was that was my first gig with him. That was a lot of people. There was like twenty thousand people there that night. Yeah, right. I think, yeah, I think we had the largest crowd throughout the week too. Yeah, Greg, now, what was your first? All right, Ted. Now you'll remember this. <clears throat> it was at some little ice house in Texas where all Rocco's basketball buddies were there. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> we did a jam session. It was like a benefit, a uh, uh, local get down. And uh, it was as rough and tumble as 1952 yep. with uh, a brand new Fender guitar and amp trying to play, uh, you know, Lonnie Mac music. But yet we, and you know, here's the thing. What Jason and Greg, and they're, they're perfect examples of how I always just rave uh, uncontrollably about the quality of virtuosos and work ethic of everybody who's been surrounded. I could go right down the list from 1958 in Detroit, and I could name every drummer, every bass player, every guitar player, every singer, because I've been so lucky that what Jason and Greg represent is a musical dedication a professionalism that we heard echoed from, certainly were echoed from Billy Gibbons and echoed from Mitch Ryder and Tim Montana. There is a musical bond, even before you become professional or you have an official gig, that the music, there's a song called Let the Music Do the Talking, and my last record was called The Music Made Me Do It. And that phrase embodies the desire and the dream to replicate the music and that that has to start somewhere Greg, with you what was the music with me it was the guys that you know first played the electric guitar chuck berry bo diddley little richard jerry lee lewis certainly lonnie mack and Dwayne eddy and uh and the ventures and then eventually mitch Ryder with jimmy mccarty but greg who were your earliest influences and what year are we talking about uh probably the earliest um would have been you know the the, the 70s rock and roll you know I mean, you, you know, your band, Ted Nugent, um, Bad Company, Queen, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, um, Cactus, 10 years after, you know, bands like that. Because uh, I, I had a buddy who had an older brother, and we used to steal his albums, bring them to my house. And uh, so we were listening to kind of older stuff. And uh, that kind of stuff, it, it put the difference between I love music to holy crap, I need to play this. I need to know how to create this and, and play it and, and create some of my own, you know? Yeah, so, what Greg uh, just said, John, is a universal uh, mantra from every yeah. musician I've ever known, and that's that they were turned on by original influences, me with Chuck and Bo and Little Richard especially, and James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Motown, all these authoritarian beasts of emotion and soul. But we couldn't just listen to it. It wasn't enough just to put the needle on the record and, yep. and rock and roll or even play right. along with it. You had to pursue your own version of that statement. And, and Jason, as a young guy, you're only 25 now. So you were born 
after I sold 40 million records. Yeah. And where we, we took what, what Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry did, and we already passed that baton through four generations. So as a young kid growing up in Detroit, starting to play drums as a six-year-old, what were your original influences? Were you even old enough to know what an influence was? Well, you know, I, I, um, my, my dad is a, you know, big music virtuoso in terms of he listens to everything. So I was exposed to, you know, every genre of music right off the get go. And I started playing drums when I was six months old. Six months. And, six months. Uh, and I started playing <laughs> cover gigs when I was five around Detroit, you know, so I, it's just, it's just one of those things that it's literally been in my entire life. And well, that's very impressive. That's very impressive. He played drums when he was six months old. Well, I got you beat at seven well, months in the womb. I was doing this on my umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ted, there's a... Uh, and my mom was having a, all these, all these uh, stomach pains. And then I came out middle finger first. And I think they set it on fire that day. I, I didn't drink out of a bottle. I started I started uh, nursing on a, on a moose tit. Ted, listen to this. Uh, Maxine in the uh, Facebook comment room said that the first time she saw Jason was in New Jersey with Pistol Day Parade opening for Ted when he was 18. Yep. And then the next time he that uh, the next time that they saw you, you were Ted's drummer. Yeah, you there's know, a transition. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty crazy. You know, uh, 2014, I, you know, toured for, what, two and a half months opening for those guys. And, you know, it was great because I, you know, got to know, you know, the band and crew. And so when I got the call for the gig, it was such an easy transition because everybody knew how I operated. You know, that's how it usually yeah. goes, John. When, you, when you're on the road, you meet musicians, and we always pay attention to the other bands, the opening bands, or whether you open up for somebody else. Everybody pays attention because we love the music. So we want to see what the other guys are doing. And even though there's a meaningful level of competitive spirit going on, you still have a reverence because you know if they're going to play really good, they have the same work ethic and the same, the same cravings and dreams for music. But Greg and Jason, I got to tell you, you were never at the Grandy Ballroom. You were never at the VFW halls in, in 61, 62. You were never at the Walled Lake Casino. The origins of absolute mayhem, sweat, fests. But guess what? You didn't have to be because every night when we play, it is more intense than the most outrageous night in 62, 65, 69, 72. I'm telling you what we witnessed in New Jersey last year at that at that place. I don't even know what it was. But what we witnessed, and, and then some of these places where there's only a few thousand people, like up in Minnesota, where you got that low ceiling, you know, and you can hardly lift your Oh, yeah, up. yeah, yeah. John, there is no yeah. words to possibly describe the intensity and the fire and the energy and the fists and the smiles and the laughter and the cleavage you can't describe <laughs> this stuff and i'm only, i'm just talking about my bass player so my point is is that anybody who thinks they miss the outrage of those earliest amboy dukes mc5 uh, grand funk railroad i don't care who you name you live it every night with this band because jason and greg put their heart and soul here's our mantra john Every gig is the most important gig in the world. Every Absolutely. song is the most important song in the world. Right. Every night is the most important night. We do a fist pump before we go on stage. And you guys, in fact, I'll ask you, Greg, you've played with some great, great artists, some of the biggest artists in the world. Is there another example of the forehead vein popping, snarling, drooling, ganashing of teeth? Before we before we're fist pumping as if street fighting man is going on, it is is it my am I correct thinking that's a unique fire bond? No, no, you are one hundred percent right. As a matter of fact, um, you know, and, and I do play with a lot of different bands, uh, but there's nothing as intense as playing Ted Nugent music. As a matter of fact, usually the first week of every tour, my my fingers are bleeding. Matter of fact, they, they look very much like they do right now. If you can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> nice calluses. I, I did two that. gigs last week after not playing forever, and uh, you know, but that's what my fingers look like at the beginning of a Ted Nugent tour because it's a different intensity. You know, 
you're not you're not just phoning it in. You have to bring all your heart and soul, all your emotion, and all your talent and everything you have into every single song. And I know, Jason, that's how you've always approached stuff. But you have to admit that we have never our worst gig is a stone cold mother. I. Our worst gig is insanely good. We've yes. never had anything that even approaches bad. And I know you've played with some great artists, but isn't there almost, you almost levitate as Street Fighting Man comes out and we're about to take the stage, whether we start with Gonzo or a Great White Buffalo or, or Stranglehold, wherever we start with. I mean, it. I use the term out of body. In your experience with all the bands you've been playing for 25 years, um, it, it's pretty damn special, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. 100%, you know, and it's, it's, again, I think it's, it just goes back to, you know, we are honestly the last band that approaches this old school, you know, no click tracks, no backing tracks, you know, none of that stuff. And it's 100% live. And, you know, I've said in interviews, it's like our sets 60% improvised because it's completely different every single night. And I think that's what makes it yeah. fun. It makes it makes that's it amazing. I mean, hell, Ted, Ted has called out songs on stage we hadn't played in months and sometimes years. And, you know, it, it, it keeps Greg and I on our toes because we, we got to ex be expected to know this stuff and nail it perfect. We have uh, we have some comments in uh, in Facebook and everyone's talking about the first time that they saw you guys play. The, the, the most common question that's coming up is Ted is so full of energy. Is he really always like this? Now I get to deal with Ted on the around the campfire, and I haven't seen a down moment. Even did, I think the second one, Ted, you said, "Oh, I don't feel well," and I couldn't tell you didn't feel well. Is he always like this? <laughs> Wait a second. There's no stage Ted and any other Ted. Ted is Ted, you know. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter. It was six o'clock in the morning, you know, nine o'clock at night, stage time, backstage. Ted is Ted. He's the real deal all the time. No drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. He's just <laughs> pure natural energy all the time. He's on 11. He As invented fact, 11. One of my favorite quotes is like, Ted goes, I'm already like this. Imagine if I did drugs. <laughs> yeah, he'd pop. <laughs> Somebody would get hurt. Well, you know what they're talking about and what the comments are. People will tell you, I get it every day on Facebook. And again, in my travels, when Shemaine and I drop up, she's got a wonderful TV show and we do it up in Dallas. And we're stopped everywhere we go. And the the intensity and the celebration of everybody. I saw you in 76 over in the, the Dallas. I saw you in 1969 with the Amway Dukes in Cleveland. I mean, it, it, it's literally out of body. The, the music has a life of its own. And I, I am clean and sober my whole life. And when you're clean and sober and you respect your gifts from God, they work really good, even when you're old like I am. They, it, it's just, I am so alive. A lot of people go, ah, Nugent's crazy because I'm passionate because I'm so alive. They think that's crazy. The, by the way, the people usually say it go, ah, Nugent's crazy, man. <laughs> They're usually <laughs> picking not to, be nose, confused right? with, not to be confused with comfortably numb nut. <laughs> um, hey, Jason you and Greg, you, you guys have had the incredible pleasure of playing with you know, different bands and seeing different rock stars. The In terms of the fans, what I'm blown away by, and everyone needs to heart this up, you got to hit heart, you got to hit thumbs up, because that's how the algorithm works to keep the spirit campfire going. In terms of the fans, I, I've never seen a more loyal group of fans than Ted Nugent fans. Everyone's saying, I saw you, Ted, in, literally right here. Literally, I saw you in 1975. Blowing, uh, blowing Aerosmith off the stage, like 1975, and now it's 2000. It's 2020. Like these fans are with Ted, like till death do us part. And, and the you know what thing is, go ahead, Greg. No, if I can elaborate a little bit more on, like you know, talking about people. For instance, when we we do the uh, uh the backstage uh, get, get down with with some of the fans, um, and they say, hey, I saw you in 1977 at. Uh, you know, whatever the place in Cleveland, and you go, yeah, I remember it. You remember what you were wearing. You remember what happened. If somebody threw a firecracker, if somebody passed out, you know, uh, it's it's just, you know, Derek fell off the stage. I mean, you know, you remember everything about that stuff, and it's just, it's it's mind-boggling. 
Well, when I say every gig is the most important gig, I mean, I mean that sincerely. I do remember every gig, no matter what they, what gig they reference, I'll go, yeah, that was that white outfit yep. with the fringe and it got caught in the amplifiers that night when we were playing uh, Baby Please Don't Go. I mean, I remember all that. The, I mean, it, uh -huh. it's really fascinating. Bill Jorgensen. If, if you're cleaning hey, sober, Ted. stuff works. Bill Jorgensen saw Ted for the first time December 15th, 1978 in Nashville. Like, I was there. That's a lot. <laughs> you were there. I was there. <laughs> well, my point is, is that when you surround yourself with dedicated musical virtuosos like Jason and Greg, and again, I can name them all. I've just been so lucky. I, the top 1% of musicians that have ever walked the earth, most of them have been in my band. And they execute the songs that came out of my soul, songs that I created and wrote in my lyrics that I mean and and the chord changes that represent a musical adventure to me and a throttle and a pulsation and a groove and a tightness that I picked up from the James Browns and the Funk Brothers and the Stax Volt and the Booker T's and, and certainly the Stones and the Beatles and the Kinks and the Who, they were all weaned on American black music. They were all turned on by Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard and Jerry Lee Lewis and Motown and James Brown. So that musical authority, it permeates Jason. When he comes to rehearsal, when he comes to the sound check, when Greg plugs in that bass, I know I can do anything. And I don't have to say when they, I mean, a brand new lick that no one's ever heard before. They'll listen to me take off on the lick and they'll come in like, like like we've been playing it for 10 years so that that makes i'm not just me i'm an accumulation of those great people you and and greg and jason what's been amazing about ted is how he gives credit where credit is due every to every week around the campfire he he never says oh i'm this i'm i'm this great solo artist he said, look, I've, I've been surrounded by the world's greatest musicians. They work harder than anybody. They're, I mean, these people are so talented. He's giving credit where credit is due. When you guys are on stage with Ted and you feel that positive energy emanating, like, like literally, does it feel like the music is writing itself? You guys kind of go into this zen state where you're so connected and clicked together that it's one organism? Absolutely. You know, I mean, like... This this unit's been together for five years, and you know when we did this this last record, the music made me do it. I mean, we recorded the the basic drums, bass, and guitar in five hours for the entire record. You know, and and I tell people this, and they're blown away because it's really unheard of. You know, wow. and it, it all is credited to we know how each other operate. We know what you know. Greg and I know what Ted's going to do because we played so many shows with him. You know, and it it really, really helps the the tightness, the groove, and just the overall attitude of everything that we play. And by the way, everybody, the music made me do it. The people that did buy it, there's not a music industry really out there unless you play pop music or, or Saturday morning cartoon music. By the way, you know you know the new number one country song? Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Anyhow, um what what we did on the last record, the music made me do it. People that got a hold of that go nuts and say it may very well be the best record we've ever made the best ted nugent record they've ever had and last year i'll, I'll defy gravity for you john 2019 yeah. 62 concerts the best tour of my life now what defines the best tour it was off the charts fun we had so much fun. The sound of the guitar and the bass and the drums and what Frank does through the PA and Mark does with the monitors. It was literally like listening to your favorite record and your favorite song on the best stereo on the planet. And it makes you play like an animal possessed. So number one, it was the most fun. It was the tightest tour. It was the tightest gigs. The music was, like you just said, John, we become a single fist of pulse and rhythm and spirit and the audiences i've been i've been in front of a lot of audiences 2019 there wasn't a human being at any gig they were all some kind of animals some kind of escaped <laughs> varmints and they I mean, literally the enthusiasm at because you know why because in this late day in my career even though i'm just getting started the real music lovers, the people who pay attention 
there's no background music in their people's lives. Well, there is some country stuff. Um, that's why it's turned way down in the truck. It's not really meant to be listened to. Um, love the country guys, by the way. Um, but they, they literally raved that it was the most intense, high energy, fun, and the tightest of my life. So Greg and Jason, thank you. And we have a great crew too. My God, yeah. our crew is so good. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, uh, 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 Ted, comment from uh, Facebook is uh, Joe said that he watched you lose a tooth and spit it out and never <laughs> miss a note. What show was that? That was it. That was it. Uh, the New Jersey gig. I had my daughter, Sasha, and my grandkids <laughs> oh. there. And I'm up there rocking my balls off. I mean, my, my scrotum was swinging from coast to coast, taking down big giant buildings. And the I think the rock of Gibraltar took a big cut right down the middle from my left nut. But anyhow, I digress. Actually, that's progress. I'm I'm progressive. So anyhow, I'm screaming. I'm doing some kind of scream, some kind of outrageous animal breeding sound. And all of a sudden, I'm rocking my, I mean, I'm just smoking on the bird land. Next thing I know, I go, dang, the tooth goes out. I went, boom, I caught that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I caught that's... my tooth. And of course, with the tooth missing, I was looking for my banjo. I couldn't find my banjo. <laughs> Well, I, got, I, I, I literally, I took that tooth and I, it's, it's this one right here. I actually went and had some oral surgery because the son of a bitch came out again last month. <laughs> it's not right because I could fit a straw in there and drink a Verner's. But anyhow, yeah, I caught, I spit my, inadvertently my tooth came flying out and I caught that son of a bitch, stuck it back in and then it fell out again. So I put it on my amp and luckily uh, Todd saved it for me at the end of the night. The next day I went into a dentist in Connecticut, had it glued in and then it blew out the next night too, which we're going to try to work into the act from now, see if I can lose my whole front end. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta tell you. Um, I think the, the strangest thing that happened since I've been in the band was this last year when we were playing up at, at the uh, Paramount in Huntington Beach. Yes. We're um, we're about halfway through the set, and and I'm playing, and you know, oh. Greg and I are on in ear monitors, so you know, if if our ears go down, we hear nothing. So I'm I'm playing, my ears go down, so I'm I look back at my drum tech Randy. And I, I start freaking out because I thought my pack's done. So I'm throwing, you know, th still trying to play the song. And and he's looking at me. I turn around and Ted's just staring at me. We lost all power. The entire power what? went out the entire building. We blew it up. 2019, Ted Nugent will blow up your power grid. And Randy, you was your drum tech? Yeah. Randy, I think Randy's out there. Randy, if you're out there, you should hit the Zoom link and join us if you're out there. So, hey, so hey, John, let, let's take a uh, comment from uh, Mark Peacock, if you can summon him up, because he's a good friend. I think he's been to almost as many concerts as Jason has. Yeah, uh, yeah Mark, he, Mark Peacock, I saw him in the... Hey, Mark Peacock, if you're out there now, put a question in the comment box. Um, right now, he's got a whole bunch of... I, I honestly have to scroll back thousands and thousands of comments. But don't worry about it. I'll tell you what, and just to keep everybody here, we're only going to be here for 15 more minutes, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I started the show off tonight with the national anthem and we will stop at a couple minutes before 10 o'clock Eastern time. And I'm going to do another rendition. And as you can see, I'm further inspired by Jason and Greg, and I will do another adventurous, emotional patriotic it's version awesome. of the national anthem the star spangled banner as we wrap up the show so everybody stick around for that mark peacock said ask ted to tell the story behind sweet sally well sweet sally is <laughs> another great guitar lick sweet sally there you know uh, maybe maybe Watch he should up. tell you the story of sweet sally but he goes the lick is great goes, just loves that lick because when he grows up he wants to try to do that on guitar and by the way mark it'll never happen it'll never happen. <laughs> you haven't got the mojo you haven't handled enough gut piles by the way i think i should just celebrate here the reason my hands are so so soulful and greasy right. and effervescent and and vital in the spirit world is because i kill gut skin and butcher my own sacred 
protein. Now that sounds like a cute little statement, but every word I just said, it's true. I have a unique delivery on the guitar that nobody else in the world has. And I, I revere all the other statements by all the other guitar players, but if there's a primal goo coming off a guitar, it would be from my guitars because I'm a hunter, a fisherman, a trapper. I plant crops. I, I plant my own trees. It's, an, it's a, tr a tradition in the Nugent family every spring. We always put more back than we take. And when you dig in the earth and you monitor the habitat for wildlife that is not just for targets because non-game species and the songbirds, by the way, I can name every songbird by the song as long as I have my, walk, my, uh, my uh, miracle ears in. My connection with the earth, we've talked about this, and now I'm getting into something here because Jason had never hunted before. And I would mm. like to get Jason's, now Greg is a hunter, he's an outdoorsman, he's a shooter, but Jason had never handled a firearm in Detroit. I don't know how you survived that, but uh, he had never, never gone hunting before, but he said he would like to learn. So he came out to my barn last fall and he got a nice 450 Bushmaster and he sighted it in and he went about it properly, he took his time and was very dedicated. Jason, what do you think as a Detroit city guy who's been a musician and pretty much obsessed by the musical pursuit all your life, what have you come to realize or maybe consider that that primal connection with the earth, understanding your conservation cause and effect so that you benefit the environment, not hurt the environment, that's really what hunting is all about. That's what conservation is all about. What did that mean to a young Detroit drum maniac to learn the aim small, miss small firearm safety discipline and to sit in that blind and feel what happened on that opening day, November 15th, 2019, that was the first morning, not just the first opening morning of your life, but maybe the first morning of your life where you're there in the dark and you had the world come alive around you with a deer tag in your pocket. Try to express what happened to you that day and, and was it special? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely completely different than anything I've ever experienced in my life. You know, I've never, ever in my life been an outdoors person. Um, you know, actually, the, my first day on the job with Ted, he found out that myself nor my drum tech had ever shot a gun before, and rehearsal stopped instantly and uh, went out to... And I shot both of them. <laughs> And, uh, you know, put a 22 in my hand and then put a 12 gauge shotgun and fucking blew my sh shoulder off. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it, it definitely was just something completely, completely foreign for me. And, you know, it, it, and I think it's definitely a right of passage of, of, you know, being in the Nugent band for five years that, you know, it's something that I had to do. And, you know, I, I got lucky to, you know, get a, a nice buck on my first shot ever. You know, and it, um, I don't know, it's just, it, it's, it's indescribable, you know, the excuse. Would you, would you concur, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I've been doing it my whole life and it's such a huge part of my spirit and my, my physics, um, the physics of spirituality with attitude. Do you understand those sensations you experience for the first time? Do you better grasp the term healing through nature? Did you feel that in the, the upcoming chaos of political mayhem and, and certain city-fied conditions, did you feel that in that morning, you're a super calm guy anyhow, which I'm trying to get him, I'm trying to get him out of that. <laughs> I put off an NM80 up his ass one day, it didn't even go off. <laughs> but the point is, do you did you sense what I've always talked about the cleansing of the soul, the healing powers of nature. You've got a shot, you got a beautiful rifle that you practice with to be effective and, and ethical. And you were in one of my prime deer blinds and that fog was lifting off that swamp ahead of you, off that food plot that I had planted. Was there a sensation of super calming and, and, and a nature healing occurrence? 100%, you know, and... Um... You know, I've always been someone that loves the cold, 
you know, and, and loves winter. And we had, you know, had a, had that snowfall like a couple of days before. So you know, all nice and white and, you know, really, really nice, bitter cold. And yeah, it was, it definitely was a, a very calming experience, you know, and which is, which is, you know, something that most people wouldn't say when they're hanging out with Ted Nugent, that it's a calming experience, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so proud of you. He did a, he did great. He shot a beautiful buck. And then you've been dining on that sacred venison, and that's pretty damn special too, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I, I've got a really nice offset smoker, and, you know, every Sunday I've been, you know, making some phenomenal jerky, you know, out of the, the, um, the roast and the steak, and it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, awesome. Jason exactly. Harvest, the, the wilderness natty bumpo. And Greg, you're an outdoorsman. What role do you think that plays? Because the music can be insane. We've seen so many of our heroes die trying to escape the music with drugs and alcohol and making mistakes in their lives. Do you feel that your outdoor life up there in the wilds of Pennsylvania, that that plays a role in your balanced life between the mayhem of playing Ted Nugent music and the calming of an outdoor time with your with your daughter and your wife? Did you get that, Greg? I think we might have lost Greg. I think Maybe I think Jason's last Greg. story might have scared the hell out of him. Well, it, hey, listen, Ted, we gotta we we actually have to wrap this up because we, you are going to be playing the uh, national anthem. We want to thank. Listen, we really, really want to thank Jason and Greg for sharing their Absolutely. stories, um, their positive energy, oh, yeah, for joining yeah, us I, around I, the campfire. Yeah, Greg, we're going to wrap it up. And thank you, guys. Greg and Jason, thank you so much, man. It's a, it's a real honor to collaborate my musical right, dream with I'm, guys I'm dedicated to professionals like you guys. So I can't wait till we get back together. I was playing some of my new songs for Jason before we went on the air, and I've got some killer new songs. I've got a really beautiful love song called Skinny Bitches that I think Jason will play a really beautiful drum track to. So, uh, um, Jason, thank you. Greg, thank you. Give my love and my very best to your family. And I can't wait to see you guys to make some more killer music, man. Absolutely. So, I'm going to miss playing with you guys this summer. Yeah, it's heartbreak. It's interrupt us raucous. Well, John, thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody right. for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Ted, thank I wanted you, Ted. We got some uh, a little bit of business to take care of before uh, I want you to rip into yeah. the, your uh, Star Spangled Banner. But before we do that, we have to honor our military charity. Um, we're going to honor our military charity. Then J Ted's going to play the national anthem. Make sure you guys heart it up. Give us a thumbs up so everybody knows because Ted's about to just totally shred on us. But here's the uh, charity, Ted, that you told that you uh, told me that you wanted to show off, and that is boom right here. Bucks for the brave. Yeah, it's a great bunch of guys. You know what we'll do, John? We'll we'll feature a military and a children's charity every show, one way or the other. But this is presented by uh, my friends at uh, the Sportsman's Feed. It's the uh, the the record rack people who put together an incredible hunt. As as Crispy have told us, all our veterans have told us, there is a super healing power in nature at the deer camp in texas every year and jody and everybody at record rack and sportsman's feed they go way out of their way they're very generous very giving and i'm proud to be a part of that one and then we also have a delta force special ops military charity that will feature in the future but meanwhile happy independence day to everybody i hope you have a wonderful barbecue Thank <laughs> you.
Happy Independence Day. Hey, uh, Ted, we have amazing requests from the room right now. Are you willing to pick up that guitar one more time? Sure. What you got? Um, everybody said, John, it's your birthday. Ask Ted to play Stranglehold. He hasn't played it on electric guitar on the campfire yet. I can do um, it. The lick. If you're going to do it, everybody's going to freak out. Well, I can. This is a huge birthday around. present, and I'm going to assume it's for me and the 3.5 million Facebook fans who are out there. but it sure is fun where I'm sitting. It, it was pretty amazing. Everyone, thank you so much for another amazing show. Go to thespiritcampfire.com, buy your merchandise. Go to tednugent.com. He's got a red hat he wants everyone to buy. Oh, by the way, Make sure John, you support our military charities. By the way, John, I was in the yep. shop today. I signed 1,000 of these. These are personally oh, autographed. God. Go ahead and get yourself one of those. <laughs> You better make sure that the algorithm doesn't see that because they'll shut us off fast. No, I got it blocked off. It's just like NBC. 
Yeah, it's like the same thing. Hey, everybody, we'll be back next uh, Monday at uh, same time, same channel, same place, 9 o'clock right here, East Coast. God bless you all. Happy 4th of July. Be safe.